Good morning. You're listening to UCC 98.3 FM. This is The Breakfast Show. And on today's show, I will be talking to Jake and Cynthia from Open Floor International. It's about being attuned and aware. How do I help others move? We're in module two of three modules of a teacher training. There is a specific threshold that someone enters when they love to dance and have felt moved to actually hold this for other people. They start to move from dancing as their own practice to teaching as a practice. I was just dying to see what that ingredient, adding one thing in. And I suppose as a teacher in training, it helped clarify that the simplicity of making a real offering. What was the actual instruction you gave? Keep moving, allow yourself to keep moving. Very often you don't get what you wanted to get with your instruction. We gave the instruction, take risk in your movement. It didn't take what? Take risk. This is about risk. Teaching is a really vulnerable thing to do. You put yourself out there in front of a room full of dancers, whether it's two people or 150, it is very vulnerable. You're taking what you love and trying to offer it to someone else teacher perspective. What are you noticing? Going with what feels curious as opposed to what feels right or wrong or even yeah. what I think might benefit the mover. Yes. So when we bring the spirit of curiosity, this is all an investigation. Never be afraid that you're going to offer something that's not going to work. You're only <laughs> going to do that a thousand times. <laughs> and then you try something else. Here's a group of people who have dedicated a huge amount of time and energy and money to align themselves with the practice of embodiment as an avenue of expression, as an avenue of work. Everybody understands that feeling of being connected to what has meaning, being connected to others and to a work and to a, a path in life that, that feels right, has meaning, is important. The richness or the benefit I got from Open4, I really felt I want to step in and, and and give that on to other people. I think the world calls out for this sort of work, so it really touched me in that way. And I thought, yeah, I want to teach it. I'd love to teach it. Part of the reason why I want to do this training and why I want to be a teacher in it is because it's affected me so much. I think to make a decision to be a teacher is to really, um, first of all, is to take a step towards committing to putting yourself out there. Because as a teacher, you're out there. Your voice is out there, your intention, your passion, everything is out there. The biggest transition for me from student to teacher was to speak and to articulate what's inside to the outside world. The most challenging bits are getting up in front of my peers and leading them through a class. It's a bit scary getting up in front of them and going, oh gosh, they're experts at this, they know how to do this work. And here I am leading them into it. So it is, it is on the edge. I do remember a point uh, really when I started, when I taught my first class, when it was kind of a big slap in the face of, well, you're actually doing this now. (laughs) 
At times I feel like it's like uh, I'm, I'm looking at a, at a book and I can't really read the book. It's kind of, I'd like, say the, the words are really blurry in the book uh, and I can't really understand what it, what's there. So I feel like I know nothing as a teacher. But then it's that, that point of actually being able to calm and connect to myself where I realise that the book's all written by me, like the inner wisdom of my body. It's just that process of getting to that point where I can be calm enough and centred enough to be able to just listen to all the wisdom I've got in my body from dancing so much. So from listening to that wisdom, then being able to communicate with others. But yeah, at times it definitely is that haze of, what the heck, I don't know anything, what does this even mean? It's amazing how when you prepare teaching and when you get there and uh, you're teaching yourself, <laughs> I feel that I'm the one that is getting most of the teaching. Because uh, I need to prepare myself a lot and also when I get there, I feel I get some knowledge. When I take responsibility to hold the space, I feel I get some knowledge that I didn't have before. <laughs> I don't know how it happens. It's uh, strange for me, but it happens. I just get some information, something that is much more intelligent than myself. So there have been many internal challenges, really. And um, part of that can be, am I good enough? You know, um, how will this be received? I suppose my old self-image. So for me, that thing of authenticity, of letting what's going on in that inside world be seen is a really... <laughs> It's a really vulnerable one as a teacher. Part of this work is strengthening the capacity to track those things. What's the, the voice that comes up within myself? Being really honest with what's going on um, for myself in any moment has been really challenging. Um, as opposed to thinking that because I have these challenges, it means I can't be a good teacher. Whereas actually acknowledging and being with it is what it's all about. So actually living the practice has been really challenging. But a great challenge, it's one of really great growth. Jake and Cynthia, welcome to Cork. So to start off, how did you get involved with Open Floor? We got together a couple of years ago um, and we started creating curriculum. So I've been one of the founding members of Open Floor and it's been a really great experience to pull together all of our knowledge and develop this practice that we're now teaching. We're going to work with repeating questions as a formal inquiry. And as a teacher, because I want to stay on the, the teaching track, this is a great integrating tool. It's a great integrating tool to take experience and allow the mind to start to find words for it. A few years ago, we put together what we consider the latest in research on this sort of work and also a bunch of new ideas that we wanted to try out. So we sat down and we created what we considered a collection of our joint wisdom and we started pulling out what's the best of what we know and how can we offer it to other people. And that became Open Floor. None of this is built off of, you know, one person's great idea. This is a long chain of, you know, this person's idea, this person's hard work, this person's lifetime. So it was a distillation of a lot of different knowledge and experience into one. What do I love about Open Floor? Well, for me, what do I love about open floor I mean, What do I love about embodiment practice or conscious dance? When I have the experience of being really connected, I feel alive, I feel able, I feel capable, I feel generous, I feel happy. And so, if I know that, I have that feeling like if I can create that for other people, uh, it makes a huge difference in people's lives. It really makes a huge difference. People heal, people feel better. People 
learn how to get out of their isolation, which is a source of so much suffering. It's my service, really. It's my job, it's my profession now, but it's my service. I get to work and serve at the same time. Do you know, I think what I'm excited about with Open Floor is um, how we're working together. We chose a structure that we could use to run the organization and it's called dynamic governance or sociocracy depending on what part of the world you're in. It feels like it's part of bringing us into a different paradigm which is connected to the work also being open source for example. That's all part of us being in another paradigm. What our hope is is that it's not a static thing it will evolve beyond us. We'll put our contribution in to it. But, you know, if we look at the larger field of dance and conscious dance or movement therapy or any of these things, that this work can evolve with the people who work it. Because things change, you know, like what people were doing 20 years ago or 10 years ago is very different than what they're doing now. I want you to move towards how you're feeling about teaching. For trainees that come to Open Floor, what they can expect is teachers who live a life that is guided by a really different way of being and listening and relating to other human beings. So if you step into an organization that's run by dynamic governance, you're gonna be transformed. And can you just explain what type of music that you dance to? Because I suppose in my head, it's almost like the classic meditation type chanting, very slow, relaxing oh. type music. No way. <laughs> <laughs> It could be some wild, out there, techno, trans stuff. It could be meditative, it could be dubstep or hip hop. Anything you've probably heard in your life has been played on an open floor dance floor. Teachers get trained to think of music as medicine, as a way of helping a group open up to the messages that are in their body. And every single teacher has their own style. What's new for me is the way I'm working with music. For the past 25 years, I was looking at music through a lens of wanting music that represented specific ways of moving that had the same BPM the whole way through or the same quality of music the whole way through. What I'm loving right now is music that invites people to go to lots of different places with the same piece of music. So there's a lot more diverse creativity happening on the dance floor than I have been seeing in my recent years of teaching. And that means I'm working harder in holding that, but it's also incredibly rewarding. What I love about Open Floor is it is not a specific methodology. It is an open practice. Because so many of us have been teachers in the field for a long time, there was this feeling of, we don't need another technique. We don't need another formula. But what is underneath all of this? What's the universal language that we're all teaching? There are basic, organic, movement principles that are inherent in any conscious movement practice. So that's where we started, with a huge, big clipboard of all of the things that we thought were universal and just kept whittling it down. And what I'm hoping with Open Floor is that we don't get stuck, oh, these are the 10 core movement principles. No, no, no. As we evolve, as we learn, as we investigate, as we watch our students, 
we might add. As Open Floor started to evolve, I started to see the next evolution in a dance practice. I can be me as a teacher. Of course, it's the open floor and the setting of it, but I, I feel I can, I can really give it the flavor of, of me. When I teach, I can't hide behind a certain practice. I can't hide behind a certain way of moving. It's whatever my truth is to bring it forward. It adds another level of vulnerability as a student and as a teacher to deliver what is my truth. We want to send people out into the world to teach in their own way. We want everyone to be themselves and offer it the way they can offer it. We help people look at the beginning of their training. What are your strengths? What are your soft spots? What do you need to develop in order to become an open floor teacher? From almost the very beginning, like the very first uh, module of the teacher training, we have the students teaching in an environment where they can learn, they can make mistakes, they can find out what works for them, and they can get really good feedback from their peers and from their teachers. When we start to take on the role of teacher, it's a different quality of listening. We are learning the art of listening to other people's heartbeats. It makes me present. Something in my DNA needs to be present. So there's some intelligence about choosing crafts or art forms that they demand you to be present. If you want to do it well, if you want to keep learning, you have to be present. It's also a lot of fun. So that's why I find that it's, it's the perfect way of doing the work, but having loads of fun as well. One of the things that I really like about Open Floor, I mean, you know, honestly, it's the, the, the teachers, it's the, the founding members. I want to learn from them. And the fact that they are intentionally being collaborative, that changes the whole feel of the practice. From the very first day, I had the feeling I am on the same level. There is, everybody is uh, moving on the same level. There is no gap between teacher and student. This organization is the most inclusive and sympathetic, empathic, organization that I've ever been involved in, and it's growing. I feel myself opening and becoming more in service, that having experienced great freedom through doing this work and knowing I would want that for everyone I love and realizing I kind of love everyone. <laughs> What I find the end result of the work is that it opens your heart. And that to me is a real signpost, like the open floor has done its job. Probably one of the most challenging parts of the week was um, when I was doing my teaching in front of Lori, mm. Mm. I got stuck. Mm. It was really, oh, it was just very frustrating. Lori stopped me. She said, you know, where's your anchor? Mm. And I realized, I didn't know where my anchor was. And I realized, oh, it's in my chest. It's mm. in my chest. And from that point, I was able to teach the session. Mm. When everybody is around you, observing, you're so vulnerable, you, mm. you know, and you're not there to show how great you are. You just really, there to learn mm. and that's that's the point that you are you meet I think you meet yourself mm. so it was challenging mm. yeah for me it was like um, because I'm already teaching is how to unzip my comfort mm. zone mm. of my role as a teacher which I already been for mm. a few years and how I open it up try to teach in a fresh curious different way I really relate to that because I have so much theater tools and once I said, okay, I'm not going to use what I already used for the last, I don't know, 7, 10, 12 years, <laughs> I'm trying something new here, I'm just like, whoa. Mm. Then, then the, the real teacher comes out, mm. you know, then, then the teacher starts to be present mm -hmm. and not the technique.
least really they're having fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it seems like they're having a good time. And Jake and Cynthia, thank you so much for coming up and talking with me. And enjoy your dance. Thanks for having us and hearing about our practice. Yeah, thank you. It was nice. There is a really nice energy here, especially here on the West Coast. The first day I arrived, I just straight away noticed how the four elements were just completely present. I was sitting on the grass, looking at the sea, with the wind blowing in my face and the sun warming my body up. It's been a really relaxed place. The people have been really inviting and friendly. <laughs> Bloody great sense of humour. And then coming out into nature, it's, um, it's been breathtaking and, and really an amazing way to, to just settle after dancing with over 100 people for 10 days, you know? It gives so much freedom and joy and life and the space to experience feelings and uh, space to change and space to be creative and to be <laughs> just whatever you want. My hope for these teachers is that they're going to leave just a little more confident, just a little more willing to make mistakes in front of people and say, oh well, let's try something else, and that they bring this medicine, because I consider this medicine. Our whole purpose in training teachers is to spread the medicine to a very sick and ailing world that needs it desperately. Mm-hmm.